and welcome to another episode of Amiga Retro. What you see before you is this fine PAL Commodore 64. I was about to say Amiga, so obviously, because my channel name, but no, it's a Commodore 64, obviously. The bread bid design. Now, the only issue I have with the PAL Commodore 64s, or PAL anything for that matter, is when you put it on my illustrious 1084S monitor, and this will be pretty much any monitor, oops, oh, sorry about that, any monitor or television for that matter, you will get this rather nice black and white picture. So even though I'm using the LCA output on this, which is a Luma, Chroma, and Audio, hooked up to my 1084S, it does not handle the PAL color signal, so what you end up getting is a black and white picture. Now, the monitor can handle the, the, uh, the PAL frequency refresh of 50 Hz, as you can see, because it's not scrolling top to bottom or whatever, so it handles that fine. And I know it works well with PAL, because when you put RGB into this, it works just fine with PAL or NTSC. But unfortunately, using the uh, Luma and Chroma inputs, you get a black and white image, because this is an NTSC monitor, which doesn't understand the PAL color signal. So, after many weeks, or maybe even a couple of months of attempts, I figured a way to get a color image on my NTSC monitor from my PAL Commodore 64 as I zoom out. Yeah, it's, oops, too far. Yes, my Commodore 64. So I will show you the hardware that I purchased off of Amazon to achieve this task. I will be right back. I have returned. This is a slightly different perspective than I'm used to, but we will get through this together, shall we? So the first thing you need is the cable of interest, which is the uh, video cable and has audio on, and, uh, sorry, audio on it as well that you can get off of, um, what you would call it? Yes, off of eBay. So basically it has the Super VHS connector that we need and it has basically left and right audio even though of course the Commodore 64 is mono these are just tied two together in the cable here and it gives you at least uh, left and right audio so you you know have audio coming out of both channels regardless of how it's hooked up so there you go so there's that cable and then this is where the magic happens i have this StarTech, uh, yes yeah, super vhs and composite to HDMI output. Now you're thinking, well, wait a second, HDMI, the, the monitor over here is not HDMI compatible or has any inputs for it. But that's where this comes in handy. This will take the HDMI and output it to Super VHS. It has a composite and it also has the uh, audio left and right, which we're not gonna be using. So the only, the only thing we're gonna be using is the uh, SVHS out. So what's gonna be happening is it's going to be, it seems a bit weird, it's going to convert the Super VHS, which the basically, uh, which reminds me, which is this cable here. So this is basically, remember the LCA, the Luma Chroma, uh, hooked up to a Super VHS connection. Now, the Super VHS is very similar to what Commodore came up with, with the separate Luma and Chrominants. They're not 100% compatible, very close. Some hardware will tolerate it. I've come across some that doesn't really like the signal coming out of this, but Obviously, this hardware here does, right? So good. So this is the cable that's gonna be hooked up to the monitor. So this is your Super VHS to, um, to LCA. Now, if you're hooking up to a regular television, you just use a regular Super VHS cable that, of course, obviously a TV, which you'll see shortly, because we will be hooking up this up to a television as well. Um, you just use a regular Super VHS cable. And there we go. So these are the three, or sorry, the four items, or five and uh, I will show you how all of this uh, connects together and of course this needs a power supply input which is over there somewhere so I will hook this up and I will be right back okay now all I have to do is actually add the Commodore 64 in here which I'll do shortly so this is uh, so from beginning to end this connects into the video out here so this cable that I showed you before to the Commodore 64 on the video out port. And, and as you can see, the, uh, where is it here? 
the, I forgot to plug that in actually. So the Super VHS output from this cable plugs into the Super VHS input of the StarTech Super VHS CVSB to HDMI converter. Then I use the cup. This is basically just a, a, a double male connector. So I could have used a longer, like a cable, I guess, an HDMI cable, but this keeps it short and much neater. So I'm basically, you know, connecting through the coupler, just double male HDMI into the HDMI to AV Super Video Out. So basically, Super VHS in, HDMI out, HDMI in, Super VHS out. So. It seems kind of weird, but it actually works, at least with this con current configuration. And of course, over here is just the audio output, which is hooked up to that cable that comes from the AV port on the Commodore 64, which is going into the oop, the back of the monitor here. So I have the LCA inputs hooked up to the monitor, my 1084S, and I have the audio going in the back as well. So let us uh, let me hook up the Commodore 64, and I will be right back. Okay, let me move this over a bit. Oh, movement. There we go. Oh, I hear stuff hitting. Okay, there we go. So there we go. We have the Commodore 64 hooked up. And we have everything running. And for some reason, I have nothing happening on the screen here. One moment. Let me see if I think one of my cables is crap. One second here. Or more crap than usual. Oh, my fault. I didn't hook up the 5 volts to that. One moment, please. Hello, and I have returned. And as you can see, I have the Commodore 64 hooked up to everything that is supposed to be. And now we have, as I zoom in here, a color image on our, uh, from the PAL Commodore 64 to the NTC, NTSC monitor. So you will see the bars, I mean the black on the bottom and the top, because this this monitor will, when it's in PAL, will show us the screen will be slightly stretched. Well, fine for PAL, it'll fit just fine, but you have to manually adjust. But anyways, I'm not gonna go into detail about that. But you can see right here, we're in NTSC which mode, which makes sense because it's outputting an NTSC signal to this monitor. So now we're actually running PAL, which in this uh, hardware here is converting it basically from Super VHS to HDMI, HDMI back to Super VHS, but it also they both support PAL and NTSC, and that is why we get this. Now, the only drawback to that is it's in interlace, so on some screens you'll see a bit of flicker, because really this is more designed for um, you know like VCRs and all other all that other kind of equipment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hook up that monstrous television down there, which is the TIMM, the T-I-M-M, Toshiba something or other. Um, <laughs> it's a multimedia monitor. Um, and you'll see what happens uh, to that if I don't use um, this device here. But as you can see, everything works just fine. And I will be right back, because I mean, I, I was gonna run uh, like a demo through here, but I might as well show it on the 19 inch monstrosity down there. And I will be right back. Hello. I have returned. I have hooked the Commodore 64, the PAL Commodore 64, up to my TIMM monitor. And I hooked it up directly, so it's not using any of this hardware at the moment. It's basically running from the AV cable, uh, so the AV cable Super VHS output from the Commodore 64 directly to the Super VHS input on the back of this monitor. And as you can see, that's what an NTSC monitor will do with a PAL signal. Not only is it black and white, it can't sync to the 50 hertz because it's expecting 60 hertz input. So obviously, not only is there no color, uh, it's rather unpleasant trying to use a computer at, in this uh, current state. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook it back up to uh, this apparatus and you'll see the improvement. I will be right back. Yes, enjoy this awesomeness before you. Yeah, any of the artifacting you see here is just a result between the camera and the television scan. The CRTs are not, not be bad for that. Um, and as you can see, the PAL signal is now being turned magically into NTSC 
and it's in color, and it's a rock-solid picture. And actually, it doesn't look too bad being Super VHS. You have pretty good clarity. You get some jail bars happening, but it's not too bad. Once you play games or demos or whatnot, it will look just fine. So I'm going to zoom in on this a bit, on the screen, that is. And I'm going to quickly throw on a demo, just to show you how well this works. So let me try to remember how to do this. Oh, yes, there we go. Going to go down to the USB memory stick, grab the demo. Uh, you can see, I'm not sure you can see it um, on the screen, but I can definitely see Flickr here because it's taking, you know, I think the uh, 240p progressive, whatever these units put out, and it's turning it into 480i so that you get the interlaced, um, interlaced output. The Amiga is not quite 240 uh, progressive, but it's around there. And we'll enter this and go to one of my favorite demos, 1991. And hopefully the volume isn't too loud. And I will run this. So yes, you're, right now it's a PAL Commodore 64 on an NTSC monitor in color and perfect sync. Using those two devices to convert from one to the other and back again. have some volume and like I said the artifacting is just the mall ray pattern is just because of the camera filters or this whatever I'm sure someone else can explain it better it's just what it is but it doesn't look like that in real life give me the volume up here and there you go loud that's coming across. The only side effect of using this is because the frequencies, you know, being converted from 50 hertz to 60 hertz, your scrolling may not be as smooth, um, and you might get some other minor artifacting, but it's better than the alternative. You can actually play games on this, uh, you can obviously watch demos, and it's uh, perfectly usable. So it's a great solution uh, to get Palamigas to function on NTSC equipment. And that is pretty much it. I just wanted to share this with you. I will leave descriptions of the actual hardware below if you're interested. And that is it. And as always, thanks for watching.